I'm Deborah Myberg and I'm with Charles Philippona, who's a champagne producer. Now, where is your property located and where are you sourcing your grapes? So, of course, we are in the Champagne region of France, uh, in a small village called Marreuil sur Aïe, next to Aïe, where the family uh, originated in the 16th century and where we've been growing grapes and uh, making wine uh, ever since, right in the heart, right in the center of the Champagne region. Now, how do you select the grapes for Champagne? Uh, well, I wouldn't say we select them. We, we selected uh, the land a long time ago. We selected the terroirs a long time ago, and we just go growing the grapes in the best possible terroirs, and the grapes uh, select themselves. Of course, we also do a selection at the time of picking, but the selection is really from tradition and from where we own vineyards and from where we have the uh, historical contracts uh, with the growers. Now when it comes to champagne, everyone's talking about choc, choc, choc. Yes. Uh, why is choc so special? Choc is a very soft kind of limestone and is extremely powdery and uh, mineral. Because it is so powdery, uh, the vines can uh, absorb some of uh, the calcareous uh, elements of the soil and hence the wine becomes uh, very dry, almost salty in taste and this is really what makes Champagne very very special. And how about the bubbles? Uh, it's a bit controversial whether looking at the bubbles gives you a signal or doesn't give you a signal about quality. What do you think? As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't give me much of a signal. Um, it is true that uh, longer age champagnes and more complex champagnes have uh, finer bubbles. It's a matter of pressure and it's also a matter of the uh, internal tension of the wine or concentration of the wine in a way. Uh, so the finer the bubbles, the longer age the champagne, um, the less filtered the champagne, and it's a good sign. Uh, but it's not enough. Taste should really guide your, uh, your evaluation of, a, of any champagne. The main purpose of the bubbles, in my mind, is uh, to help put lees, to help put yeast inside the bottle. And when you uh, smell champagne, what aromas come to mind with yours? Two families of aromas. Uh, the first family is the family that comes from the grapes themselves. Um, so in a young wine, it'd be the fruity aromas. This may evolve into more uh, uh, complex aromas with time. But that would be the grape family of aromas. And then because it is champagne and because there is yeast in the bottles, I, as I said just before, uh, there is a whole uh, second family of uh, aromas uh, of the smoky, toasty, uh, roasted uh, character uh, that interact with the fruity aromas. And that's what makes the complexity of champagne. These two aromatic elements. And with time, they blend together. And sometimes you just can't recognize uh, what comes from what. And if there's wood, you can't even tell uh, from the third family, which would be the uh, wooded uh, oak wooded, aromas. Do you use from any my... oak in your we do, production? We do. We uh, ferment part of our wines in oak. Uh, the vintage wines, for instance, are half fermented in oak and half in stainless steel. And then we blend the two elements. It's very difficult to distinguish uh, the oaky aromas when they're light, and they're light in champagne, from the uh, toasty, smoky aromas from the yeast. They tend to really mingle together and it's hard to say where it comes from. Champagne's always had great success exporting around the world. There's such a magic around the Champagne name. But you have two names, Charles and Philippe Honnat. Both of them, you don't pronounce the last letter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Can you say it correctly for us? So people... Charles. Charles is my uh, first name. Philippe Honnat. All right. Philippe, Philippe Honnat. Philippe With Honnat. the tone on the last syllable in French. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you.